Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is To Can Play That Game with a review of Night Lancer by Adversity Games. But what is it? Well, let's take a look at the box here. We have uh, some cyberpunky guys looking to be kind of breaking into somewhere, fighting with weapons. That tells us the theme of the game. This is a cyberpunky game. But what is the game itself? What are the mechanics? What are you trying to do in this game? Well, for that, it's called a character development game, which to me makes me think of an RPG, that kind of thing where you've got this long, progressive campaign going where you're growing your character and developing and levelling up. But that is not what this game is. But you are still developing your character a bit as the game goes on. The whole concept of this game is that you are taking control of one of these Night Lancers. And the Night Lancers are these kind of mercenaries, kind of just downtrodden people, bad on their luck, trying to improve their lives by making money and investing that money in prospects for a better life. Now, the way they go about doing this is that each round you will buy new equipment and get new cards to kind of help you along your way in performing missions. And each round there will be different missions you can choose to take part in. If you're the first player, you'll have the first opportunity to jump on a mission and be the primary mission operator. At this stage, you will have control as to whether or not anyone else joins your crew. If people join your crew, they'll help you with the challenges, but you have to split the rewards with them. Alternatively, someone else can come in and try and do the job as well as you having a secondary crew. But if you do this, you're going to end up fighting each other if you make it to the final stage of the mission. And each of these missions has three stages. The way these missions work is you have challenges based on a stat, much like an RPG, you know, you've got your strength, melee, that sort of thing, you've got your combat stats, you've then got stealth and, or as it's called in this, covert. You then have uh, streetwise, which is like your diplomacy, things like that. And what you'll do is to perform this challenge, you will roll the dice and you'll add that to your score in that skill. So if you're doing a covert challenge, you'll look at what your covert skill is, you'll roll the dice, which will range between zero and three, and add that on. If you meet the challenge difficulty, you progress to the next level. If you fail, you'll take the fail path. Now, failing doesn't necessarily mean that you stop the mission. You may well carry on. Sometimes you will have to abort the mission. Sometimes it means that you have to do a combat challenge and when you do combat in this there are three different types of combat there's close uh, marksman and weapon smith or something like that so there's these three types of combat and the closer you are so the close combat the more health it costs you to do this so every time you get into a combat it's going to cost you health although you can get items to reduce that cost and if you fail a combat challenge Basically, you're killed. You're thrown. You're not killed. You're still in the game. You're thrown into hospital and you lose your kind of ideology. You lose your resolve to carry on with this lifestyle. And if you ever get that ideals down to zero, then you can't win the game anymore. You can still participate in the game, but you cannot win the game. But it is possible to get those ideals back up using these agenda cards that are in the game. And so you'll be picking these up using the contact cards that you get automatically at the start of each round. Some of these will allow you to then draw agendas, which are just challenges you can meet. It's like pay a certain amount of money and discard a certain type of card in order to gain a benefit. Now the benefit may well be an ideal, which would put you back in the running for winning the game. So let's go back to those missions though. So you've done the first stage, whether you went through the fail route or the successful route, and then you do the second stage and it'll be the same sort of thing. And then the third stage and it'll be the same sort of thing. And then if you successfully complete that third stage, then you get the rewards for the mission, which is always money. And sometimes it will be skills. And this is the main area where kind of character development comes in. You know, the items, you're limited to free items that you can take on a mission and you'll be switching and swapping those depending on the missions you're going on. But then your skills are just permanently there 
but the more skills you get the harder they are to buy the more expensive they are so as a reward for successfully completing a mission you may buy a skill now harder missions will give you multiple options to choose from with regards to those skills and the skills will usually give you bonuses to stats but also might give you bonus income or other things like that so it will affect the game this is the true character development but you can only get that if you successfully complete a mission now the game will carry on like this for a dictated number of rounds depending on the number of players when you finish that number of rounds you'll then count up the number of prospects that you have if you have the most prospects you've won the game now at this stage there are kind of things to go through to gain extra prospects like trading in your money etc etc but that's kind of the gist of the game. That is a good overall impression of the game. So what do I think? Well, let's sort of talk about components. You see, none of the components in this are actual final quality, so I don't really want to talk too much about them. But what I do want to talk about component-wise is this rule book here. Now, unfortunately, it is a very unintuitive rule book. The actual setup for the game doesn't start until page 17 of the rule book. It needs to be rewritten, it needs to be easier to understand and follow. You'll find, you'll be like, oh, look at here, oh, that, look at that page, look at that page. Because the problem is, they've introduced all the rules for all the different features when they're doing the component list of the game. And that isn't the best way to do that for a rule book, so this could do with a little bit of work there. But the rest of the components I'm not going to touch on at all. So what about the artwork then? Well, very little of the artwork and graphic design is actually finalised in this because it is coming to Kickstart soon, it's not complete, it is only a prototype. So, the Night Lancer images here of the characters, those are finalised, and the box art, that is a finalised picture. Now, they're fine, um, I like the whole cyberpunk theme, um, but the way it's been done in this sort of style of artwork doesn't particularly appeal to me, but you know, it might appeal to you. Obviously the rest of the components you've seen, the board and everything, very plain, very minimalist at this stage, but that will be improving as the artwork actually gets done on this game. Um, I will say graphic design wise, there are a huge number of icons in this game and that can very much kind of get in the way of the gameplay itself and enjoying the game because you look at a car and you're like oh what's that icon again and you've got to look it up and you find you can be doing this for several games before you finally kind of twig all right that's that icon that's that icon you know you learn a couple of them um, it could do with having less of those icons I have spoken to the designer and publisher of this game and they are looking into potentially changing that they are looking at changing the graphic design potentially reducing the number of um, icons that they've got and instead having words on some of the cards in place that it just doesn't need an icon and the icon just confuses matters and makes it a harder more complex game to understand and that brings me quite nicely into gameplay now it's going to come across pretty obvious here I'm not a big fan of this game. It's not that it's a bad game, it's just not a game for me. Personally, I feel the game is overly complicated for what it is. There's many ways it could be streamlined with still keeping the core of what that game is. Um, as a result of this complications and complexity, it just drags on much longer than it feels like it should. And you're just kind of there going, all right, and then we sort this out, and then we sort this out. All right, and all right, now I actually have a decision to make. And a big part of this is the icons, as I already discussed, being so many, you're like, right, so I look at this, and then I have to go look up, oh, and then I look up here, and then the rule book not being great doesn't help, because then you're like, right, reference the rule book, where in the rule book, where am I looking? And then there's other things, such as these event cards here, that really don't add a whole lot. Each round, you draw one of these cards at the start of the round and it gives you a challenge you have to perform and it's just a challenge for the sake of performing a challenge really there's no real decision there's, it doesn't affect the overall game it's just and now this is the challenge you have to do or suffer a negative this round it just makes that feel like a complete chore and you're just like all right let's get this over with right now onto actually playing the game and making decisions then there's also the fact that you have two types of health the resolve and the health 
And it's like, well, why have both? They're both kind of functioning in the same way that, you know, if you lose it, you're losing the ideal. They are health. Just combine them and have it so that you're losing both, that, you know, mental and physical health are the same thing. It's simpler and there's no real need to have them be separate. Um, what else is there? Well, ideals. You see, these ideals here, they're really easy to lose. As you do those missions, so many of the missions are dirty missions that cost you ideals. And as a result, your ideals just go down, down, down until you're like there going, OK, well, I can't take any of those missions. I can't take any of those missions because I'll be out of the running for the game. And it's really hard currently to actually get new ideals. The way to do it is through those agenda cards. But the agenda cards are really hard to get. You know, to get these, you've got to have luck of the draw on those contact cards each round. And then you've got to be lucky enough that you get the contact card that allows you to get an agenda. And then you draw two agendas and you keep one. And then you've got one agenda and you've got to hope that the agenda you drew is one that gives you ideals. Now, this is something I have already spoken to the developer, to the publisher on. And they are actually readjusting the balance on these ideals. Firstly, on how hard the agenda cards are to get then also on how hard the ideals are to get within these agenda cards, how frequent the ideals are, and also the cost. Because often with these agenda cards, they're broken. They just are an extra complexity again that you don't need. Because at the moment, there's really no reason to get these. The only reason you're getting these is in the hope that you get ideals, and realistically, you're not likely to at the moment. Because the other main reward that these often give is prospects. But you can actually just buy prospects anyway in a round, and they're cheaper than the agenda cards. But this is, again, something they're going to be addressing. But, you know, this is a review, so I am going to mention it in case it doesn't get addressed. But, you know, that'll be for you to look at come Kickstarter. You can ask the question, you can see what they've done at that point. Now, I think they've said they'll be going live end of September, early October. So that'll be the sort of time to tell. There's still nearly a month for them to make changes, what will change, I really don't know for definite. But let's not be all negative here. This game is not a bad game. It has some really nice things that I do really like. The first is these dice, adding luck into those challenges. The game can feel quite dry as you're making all the decisions, and a little bit of luck and excitement into that really helps. And what's especially good about these dice is that even if you've made sure that you've got the stats you can't possibly even if you roll a zero you can't possibly fail they have this little icon on them that means you can lose resolve which is like health you know you can be going along going oh no i've lost more resolve oh no i've lost more resolve and you don't know that that's going to happen or not so you can always prepare and be like yes i cannot fail this challenge but then you also need to be am i healthy enough to take on this challenge and i really like that it's a good addition to the game now, what else is there? The loans scheme. The fact that in this game, I've not really talked about it, but in this game, one of the actions you can take is to take out a loan for 10 money. So at the start of the game, you don't really have any money. You've got a little bit of money that your character starts with, but it's not enough. And you always feel like, ah, oh, if I could just get a bit more money, I could get that item that really helped me on that mission. And the loan system is great because it allows you to do that. But there is a cost later on. As long as you have a loans token in front of you, for each loan token you have, you're going to have to pay one credit in interest at the start of each round. So you need to make sure that you've then got the money to pay for that. And you can pay off your loan. You can just pay 10 credits at that point and get rid of the loan. So I really like this. It means that rather than the early play just being bogged down with this grind of I need to get a bit more money and just getting like one item, two items, you can jump straight in and go, right, well, I want to buy that and that and that and that. It gets you straight into doing that, pay, playing as if you've got lots of money, but knowing that you haven't really because you're going to have to pay it back. So it's very much uh, it allows you to jump in early on, but you're going to have to deal with it later. And that works really nicely. 
Now, the other thing I really love about this is the theme. I really like that whole cyberpunk theme. I like how, you know, a lot of the cards you can get are, like, things that you're putting in, like, cybernetic arms and implants and stuff. It just feels great. And they've done a good job on the world building with this. There's so much flavour text throughout the rule book, the cards, you know, everywhere you're looking, there's little bits of flavour text that really just help you remember what this cyberpunk world is, what's going on, how horrible this place is frankly and yeah so that's really good so in summary I don't like this game but I think people will like it I think there is definitely an audience for this game for starters people who like RPGs but want something that will go in a couple of hours with this theme and really like this theme will like this game people who like a game with a uh, complexity to it you know the you got to do this you got to do this a lot going on but without that kind of Euro dryness to it and that we'll play in a couple of hours, I think we'll like this game. Now, can two play this game? Yes, two can play this game. In fact, it doesn't really make much difference on player numbers with this game. The missions do work better as you're playing with more people because then you've got more people kind of trying to get on the same missions and you've got more cases of having primary and secondary crews but you can still have this a bit with two players um, as I say though it's not really a game I like so yeah it ju it's just better with more people but I still don't like it with more people so that is my thoughts on Night Lancer by Adversity Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as sharing the channel with your friends and family and subscribing to the channel. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.